Back on the 18th of May, that's a week ago, I was here to tell you I had uncovered evidence that COVID-19 was made in a lab. Evidence by a Professor Petrovsky down in Australia. Why is nobody reporting this, I wanted to know, a week ago. Well, because it took everyone else a week to catch up. Boy, have they ever. And I've got the video for you. This is The Beautiful Truth. You are on the next level. This is The Beautiful Truth, where the expression is still free. And you're very welcome. This is The Beautiful Truth with Fenton Dunn reporting. And uh, folks, it was a week ago. Check the video out here now. It's from Sky News Australia, and this is Sherry Markson uh, from Sunday Night. Folks, uh, a week before, when I brought you the story, it was me and another guy in print chasing the story up. The Daily Mail has picked it up, and now Australian TV has done an interview which is going to make this go global. So here you go. One final note of caution. Do not assume that it was China who accidentally released and also, please do not assume that it was an accidental release. It may have been a deliberate one. So, nevertheless, that said, here's where the mainstream media has caught up a week later. Take it away, Shari. Your understanding about the origins of COVID-19 will be challenged by a leading Australian scientist. My exclusive television interview that I'm going to bring you right now with Professor Nikolai Petrovsky from Flinders University in Adelaide. It's part of a Sky News special investigation, which is going to air next Sunday, a week today, at 7.30 p.m. Now, we're examining not just whether the virus inadvertently leaked from a laboratory in Wuhan, but whether it was created in a laboratory. Yes, created. This is a possibility. The revelations start tonight, right now. This Australian study has found that COVID-19 binds more tightly to human ACE2 than to any of the other animals they tested. Professor Nikolai Petrovsky, who you are about to hear from, has been working on a vaccine for the coronavirus after developing vaccines for Ebola, influenza and animal SARS. He's from the College of Medicine and Public Health at Flinders University. Here's my interview with him from earlier this week. Professor, can you start by telling me about your research? So we started modelling the COVID-19 virus back in January uh, in order to design a, a vaccine candidate. And when, when we had finished the design of the vaccine candidate, we, we then went on to explore whether we could use the same modelling approach to try and better understand where the virus originally came from. Uh, you know, to explore what animal species might have been involved in the transmission to humans. And what did you find? What were your study's findings? So the study findings were very interesting, which is that we found that the COVID-19 virus uh, was particularly well adapted to bind to human cells, and that was far superior to its ability to bind the cells of any other uh, animal species, which is is quite unusual because typically when a virus is is well adapted to an animal and then it by chance crosses to a human, typically you would expect it to originally have lower binding to human cells than to the original host animal. We found the opposite. So so that was a big surprise. So what does that actually mean in terms of the origins of the virus? So what it means is that we the, we really don't know where this virus has come from. I mean, that's the truth. Um, you know, the, the, the two possibilities, which I think are both still open, are firstly that it was a chance transmission of a virus from an as yet unidentified animal to humans. Uh, the other possibility, of course, is that it was an accidental release of the virus from a, a laboratory. Why do the majority of scientists think that it is more likely to have been a naturally occurring virus rather than the second option of an accidental leak from a laboratory? The alternative obviously has, has some quite major implications uh, for, for science and, and science on viruses, not just obviously political ramifications, which we're all well aware of. 
Can you explain to us what it is about COVID-19 and the ACE2 receptor that means it is so unusual for it to have naturally crossed species? The important thing to understand is that every virus, in, in order to infect us, it, it has to be transported into our cells. And so each virus essentially tricks uh, 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 the cells in, in the species they are infected naturally crossed species. The important thing to understand is that every virus, in, in order to infect us, it, it has to be transported into our cells. And so each virus... That's what it is about... ...quite major implications uh, for, for science and, and science on viruses, not just, obviously, political ramifications, which we're all well aware of. Can you and so each virus essentially tricks uh, 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 the cells in, in the species they are infecting uh, by binding to a receptor on those cells and then getting taken up inside the cell with the receptor. And different viruses bind different receptors, which are essentially just proteins that are on our, the surface of our cells that have a, 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 another function. So the, the virus is really just acting like a hitchhiker, getting a lift inside our cells. In the case of COVID-19 or, or SARS coronavirus 2, it hitchhikes on a receptor on our cells uh, called ACE2 or angiotensin uh, 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 converting enzyme 2. And the virus able to infect humans is it has to be able to bind ACE2. Now, in this case, this virus binds ACE2 in humans better than any other animal. So that means it's better adapted to infect humans than, than any other animal, is it has to be able to bind ACE2. Now, in this case, this virus, in, in making this virus able to infect humans, is it has to be able to bind ACE2. Now, in this case, this virus binds ACE2 from the cells the virus can't get inside, and so it actually can't infect us. So it's a very critical step in, in making this virus able to infect humans is it has to be able to bind ACE2. Why is it important for us to know the origins of this virus? I think that as scientists and, and the world, um, as a community, we, we desperately need to know where this virus came from. Um, and the reason for that is not political, it's actually pragmatic. If, if this is a wild virus that came from an animal and we don't know where it came from in the animal kingdom, then, you know, in a few years' time, we may be facing a very similar pandemic. So it's, it's absolutely critical that we work out how did this virus come to humans in, in the first place. And, and so, as I say, this is not, it's not for a political agenda. It's actually for a health agenda that we have to get to the bottom of the facts. Just Professor, what needs to happen now in terms of an investigation to get to the bottom of the origins of the virus? My view is the inquiry should start straight away because it's like any evidence trails. The longer you leave it, the, you know, whatever they say, the more faint the evidence trail. Um, so, it, you know, for that reason, it really needs to happen. It should have already happened. I think the idea of putting it off till the pandemic is over, it would be a mistake because, as I say, it's, it's better to go in when it's hot and it's easier to track down, you know, what might have happened. So um, I'm, I'm certainly very much in favour of a scientific investigation. It shouldn't be politically driven. It should be scientifically driven. And its only objective should be to get to the bottom of how, how did this pandemic happen and most importantly, how do we prevent a future pandemic? You know, that's the purpose of the investigation, not, not to have a witch hunt, not to point fingers at individuals, um, uh, but, but one, how did it happen? And how do we use that information to prevent this happening again? That, that should be the only sort of uh, objective of the inquiry. And now that you've had a chance to uh, see and hear from Professor Petrovsky, perhaps you understand why I had so much confidence in him last week, having read his published paper and uh, brought you that news report 
I'd like to also say thank you very much to Sherry Markson for asking all the right questions. That's why I brought you so much of that interview, because she asked all the right questions. And uh, I'd also like to uh, um, give a hat tip to uh, Matthew Cullen and Hoffman, who two days before me broke that story in LifeSite News, Virus Researchers Uncover New Evidence. And uh, that's him on Facebook, Matthew. He's a great uh, journalist in print, and he was first in print on this. Um, so, and the seed for my uh, video. So, uh, the story has already been denied, of course, by the health minister yesterday in Australia. Greg Hunt said that Professor Nikolai Petrovsky's research didn't tally with Australian intelligence. We know it originated in Wuhan. The first detected case was in the wet market, he said. <laughs> Nobody believes that anymore. Dude, nobody. And uh, before we uh, jump to any conclusions about where this virus may have come from, let us consider some of the wise words of Li Jianzhao, who is a spokesman for DDG Information Department, Foreign Ministry of China, no less. He says on his uh, Twitter account, his banner says, this is the time for facts, not fear damn right. This is the time for science, not rumours. Hey, with that, this is the time for solidarity, not stigma. Mm, I don't know about that, Li Jian. Uh, that sounds like collectivist groupthink to me. So uh, we'll just take a pass on that one. But it was this uh, spokesperson for the Foreign Ministry of China who tweeted on March the 12th that it might be the US Army who brought the epidemic to Wuhan. So who did bring the epidemic to Wuhan. I suppose um, that's where we move away from the accidental release issue into the deliberate release issue. And if it was uh, deliberately created, then you have at least got to entertain the possibility that it was also deliberately released rather than accidentally. And if that's the case, then China would hardly deliberately release it what would have happened there is that someone else would have come in and released it near the Wuhan lab in order to make sure that China took the heat, that China carried the can. This here is a, uh, the evidence that COVID was a US biowarfare attack on China. It's uh, extracted from a blog post on the uh, Saker website, Vineyard of the Saker, from April the 13th. And I won't go into it here, it's in the links. Remember folks, everything I talk about here in these videos is always backed up by links that you can go and check and verify yourself, including, check out that evidence that uh, it was a US by a warfare attack from somebody who claimed to be, with some justification based on the content, although information warfare is everywhere, claimed to have worked for uh, 40 years in the biodefense research arena, including at Fort Detrick in the United States. So put that into your machinery of consideration when you're trying to figure out who actually was deliberately releasing this virus. And by the way, I can already hear the naysayers saying, yeah, but it's not peer reviewed yet. Look, this guy, Professor Petrovsky, He's the guy who like does peer review. This guy is a leader in the field. And by the way, he does have one research project ongoing with the United States military. Uh, I'm, for full awareness, I'm mm -hmm. throwing that out there to make sure that you're aware of all the facts. But so this guy is no amateur. Uh, check out his professional background and you will see that everything he's talking about cannot be battered away, will not be battered away because the fit of this um, virus to human ACE2 is simply too good. And unless we find, and we're not going to now, because everyone's been looking for long enough and it's just not out there, we would need to find a virulent disease of matching intensity um, in some other animal cohort at the moment in order for this to be wrong. And that ain't going to happen because everyone's looking and there's no sign of it. There's no sign of a similar disease rampant in an animal host that jumped 
and there's no sign of the bridge. The gulf is too big. You can't jump a gulf that way. You need power assistance to jump that kind of gulf. And that's the reality that no amount of ignoring this guy and his research is going to get around. This was deliberately done. And here's the first video to talk about that. COVID-19 was lab made to attack humans a week ago. And uh, I couldn't even find anything on Google News about it. Check it out now. It's all over Google News. It's all over everything. It's made the Daily Mail. And uh, the story, uh, if it makes the Daily Mail, it, it, it's not going away. The question, though, is uh, why did it take so long for all that to happen? Where was your conspiracy media in the meantime? Why was it down to me and some guy on LifeSite News to be the only two people who were substantively banging on about this guy? And that really goes to the heart of why I do this, is not to be a motor mouth who is ranting on about the New World Order relentlessly and uh, pouring over stories, regurgitating the same old circular information. That's what you're getting in conspiracy media mostly. And it's just the same kind of regurgitation that you get on mainstream. And it's no bloody better. Same shit. So uh, I don't watch much of it. Because it's psychological warfare, this stuff, and paying too much attention to it is not a good idea. That's why when I do video, it's purposeful, it's intelligence analysis. I'm the kind of guy who, if I was working for them, I'd be an intelligence analyst. Fortunately, I'm working for you. <laughs> so, screw them. And uh, so that's why I do this. And I don't do it just to sort of regurgitate the same old shit. Um, I do it because hopefully, like with 9-11, where I was the first three weeks after the event to raise the issue of the sale of the building seven weeks beforehand and the new insurance taken out on it, is I do it in order to bring you groundbreaking stuff you can't get anywhere else. And uh, that's the purpose of the beautiful truth. Found it here. Uh, this is my first of two, this is from the Jewish Voice, I'm not particularly picking on them, uh, because this is the first of my two fake news alerts. This one, uh, like it was designed in a lab, a cell culture experiment gone wrong, according to new study on COVID-19. Well, of course, it wasn't the cell culture thing gone wrong, but that's exactly what you're going to hear when this story is mentioned. That this kind of research is dangerous and risky. And really, we have to ask ourselves questions about whether we should be doing this kind of research if these kinds of accidents can happen. Yeah. So uh, that's one. And uh, this is the other. Here we are. Five Eyes Network contradicts theory COVID-19 leaked from lab. That's what the uh, Australian health minister was talking about. He said, no, our intelligence services have absolutely assured us this thing came from a wet market and there's absolutely no evidence. So what are they at there? Well, well Five Eyes is the uh, intelligence network covering for this. And uh, what they're doing is they're making sure that they can smear by imputation China with sloppy research, etc., etc., by lots of news articles focusing on the research that's going on there, etc., etc., and uh, exploit the vulnerability of the Chinese as the Lee Harvey Oswald of this. That's what they're doing, uh, while at the same time saying, well, we've absolutely no evidence to support that kind of speculation, frankly. Lovely, isn't it? And so, uh, in, uh, in a world of deceit and deception and lies, once again, you're on the inside track and you know what is actually going on. That's why it's called The Beautiful Truth. And I'll be back with more of it pretty soon. I hope you can join me for that. But in the meantime, forbreakfornews.com. This has been Fenton Dunn reporting.